Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP's was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And I want to start off this video with Vendel from Black Swan Capitalist and also Black Swan uh, Capitalist himself. And uh, also Lynette Zhang from ITM uh, Trading, which I included a lot of her videos on this channel recently. Um, I do think everyone should go check out ITM Trading. Um, but as we do look at banks right now, banks are obviously in the spotlight as the Fed did raise rates by 25 BPS. And to some people, they don't really know what that means. But for the most part, we know that something's very simple to understand around it. It is going to constrict banks even more. And ultimately, it's going to cause a lot more bank failures. We recently talked about this in my uh, most recent XRP video. But as we do look at banks right now, the bigger question is, are your deposits safe? Is your money really there? Do they actually have your money? And is your money covered? And we do see, don't worry, folks, our money is safe and sound in the bank. So safe, in fact, that we might not be able to access it when we ha when we need it. Listen closely to this. Just as what I saw in 2008. Absolutely but this is worse. Outrageous. This is, is probably worse. get worse. Yeah. And oh, it's um, going to got... be worse than 2008 for sure. I, yeah. I definitely agree with you. Um, I know we got oh. Sesame Street running the country <laughs> at the moment. Um, but back to that FDIC thing that you were just touching on real quick. Um, sometimes I get into conversations with people out and about, about, oh, I'm FDIC. You know, I got the sticker on the bank. It's a Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. I'm okay. I got two, up to 250 grand that would be taken care of if god forbid something happens and i try to explain exactly what you just touched on a moment ago but i i try to tell them that's like having um you know some vehicle and you got full coverage insurance and when you need it the insurance company says sorry can't help you out right <laughs> that's the same concept i mean basically right it's well think about scheme. when the f and yeah, this is exactly what's going to happen. You're going to have a lot of people think that their money is safe because it's not over the $250,000 threshold, but that is not the case. And also remember, a lot of that money is going to go into bail-ins, which uh, I will address here in a second as well. But over here, we do see always count on Kennedy from some trumers. Banks are sophisticated Ponzi schemes. I can't believe he said that out loud. And check this out. This is on CNBC's actual live broadcast. Listen closely to this. I just know the world is different now with uh, with technology and the way we can communicate so quickly. And banks exist on the basis of trust. They're really just, don't take this the wrong way, sophisticated Ponzi schemes. <laughs> and they work when everybody trusts each other. And you get you get on that iPhone and start sending text messages and you have a you, you have the herd panic and stampede. Anybody can go. The speed of transmission is completely. Absolutely. It's, it's breathtaking. Senator Kennedy, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your this cancer. Is fun. And I do apologize if that video was a little low. Uh, it, it was just the audio itself because they were recording the actual TV. But as we do look at that statement, it is extremely on point. These banks are sophisticated Ponzi schemes. They work when everyone trusts them because guess what? They don't really have your money. But now with how we are seeing a lot of these uh, major transactions, deposits, withdrawals, et cetera, being streamlined through technology, well, now it opens the door for the realization to set in that banks are one, not they don't have the liquidity, they don't have your money, and also they're broke. They've always been broke. It's just that we didn't have something streamline the process to the point where we realize it. So this is very interesting to me. Now also, over here, we do see the US bank's total deposits. Check this out. So this has been slowly dropping. It started to drop uh, roughly around quarter one of 2022. It was sitting at about 19.93 trillion. Uh, today it's sitting at about roughly 19.21 trillion. And here you guys have uh, the five-year time frame as well. You can go all the way back to 2019. And here is 2020 when bank deposits started to climb drastically due to everyone getting a little bit concerned over the pandemic. They didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but as we do look in just a one-year span, you can see that these are on a major, major downfall. Um, sitting at about $19.21 trillion currently. 
Now, as I do make this video at this current moment in time, I know that the last major update from the FDIC around the reserves was sitting at about roughly $160 billion. I know that that could have very well have changed, but that's $160 billion to cover $19.21 trillion in deposits. Let's take a step back and think about that. A hundred, we'll even say just 200 billion, right? Just to make it safe. $200 billion in deposits to cut or uh, in reserves to cover $19.21 trillion in deposits. Let me ask you, does that sound sustainable to you? Because to me, that does not sound sustainable at all. Now, as we do look at a few things, here we have that bail-in. The bail-in idea is extremely large because guess what? Going back to that initial uh, video, when you believe your money is safe and sound in the bank, guess what? It's First off, it's not your money. It's the bank's. Second, no money is actually there. It's not safe. It's not even there. And also three, when they have to tell you that something is safe and sound, nine times out of 10, it's not. As we do go over here, regulatory regimes in the US. So we do see prior to the financial crisis, very large US BHCs likely expected they were too big to fail and would be bailed out if the financial distress or uh, in financial distress. Now, during this crisis, which was 2008, these expectations were realized through TARP and other bailouts. But after the crisis, the 2010 Dodd-Frank Act introduced a bail-in regime called the Orderly Liquidation Authority. The FDIC temporarily takes over, wipes out shareholders, and fires and replaces management. BHC subsi uh, subsidiaries, sorry, including the banks, continue to operate. Some debt holders have part of their debt claims turned into equity and BHC is returned to the private sector. Hmm, very interesting. Now, as we really kind of look at this, I want to take you guys to this uh, page here. So this is a full PDF file. Um, this actually breaks down uh, bailouts, bail-ins, and even banking industry dynamics. The best quote in all of this is under entering resolution. Here we have creditors expect to receive a haircut under liquidation and increase the price of the debt. Okay. Now this is very interesting because as we do look at creditors, most people will say, well, I'm not a creditor, right? But that's where everyone is wrong. We'll talk about that here in a second as well. We do see over here, Balance impose the losses of the bank onto the shareholders and creditors and recapitalizes the bank by converting debt claims into equity. Okay, so the losses of the bank are imposed onto shareholders and creditors. So as we think about that, they are going to bail out the banks by utilizing shareholders and creditors. Now, shareholders, very simple, right? It's individuals that are investing or, you know, holding shares within the bank. Totally fine. But what about creditors? Because this is very interesting. Because to most people, you might think, well, I'm only, I'm only a debitor. I'm only putting money in the bank. That's where everyone is wrong. Because over here, we do see when you, when you put money in a bank, are you a creditor? We do see at the moment of deposit, the funds become the property of the depository bank. Thus, as a depositor, you are in essence a creditor of the bank. Once the bank accepts your deposit, it agrees to refund the same amount of, or, or sorry, uh, the same amount or any part thereof on demand. So yes, technically speaking, when you are putting your money in a bank, you become a creditor. And as we look here, well, guess what? That means they can bail in utilizing your money, whether it be $5, $10, $100,000, over to the $250,000 FDIC limit. Very interesting. Now also over here, we do see Fed hikes to worsen bank prices. Listen closely to this. It's Fed hike day, that special time of the month when all Americans unite to reflect on the important things in life that the Fed plans to destroy this month. Jerome Powell is expected to hike rates by another quarter point to 5%, the highest since right before the 2008 financial crisis. But don't worry, 
He's telegraphing this will be the last hike for a while, after which the Fed repairs to its mountaintop layer to survey all that it has crushed. Now, an optimist might say the Fed's done smashing up the joint. Mission accomplished. Maybe we can stop hurtling towards the ground at full speed. A pessimist might note the damage is already done, going by jobs and banks, while inflation hasn't gone anywhere. The Fed is simply giving up, admitting it has painted itself into a corner, meaning after this, it's hopes and prayers. So what went wrong? Jerome Powell knew that the fastest rate hikes in 50 years would crush jobs. In fact, he bragged about that repeatedly last year. He should have known they would also crush banks, since crushing jobs means crushing companies, means lots of bad loans. Uh, exquisitely paired with the well-known fact that rate hikes crash the bonds that make up most bank assets. So why did he do it? Because Powell knew bad inflation numbers are a huge political risk to the Fed's power. Politicians would take it away. Uh, yet he was unwilling to stand up to those same politicians over their $7 trillion in deficit spending that drove inflation. Instead, he opted to crash jobs and crash the banks to make the rest of us cut back so the feds could keep spending, essentially flatten all of the cars on the highway so the feds can drive faster. So what's next? Going by recent inflation numbers, this final quarter point kick in the teeth won't kill inflation, which has metastasized in recent months at about 4.5% core. Meanwhile, yet more regional banks are crashing this morning with distressed Western Alliance and PacWest currently sporting double-digit declines to go with their 20% drops yesterday. It's worth mentioning that in our last financial crisis in 2008, we had a few big banks go under early on and then hundreds of regional bank failures in their wake. So given that we've just had the second, third, and fourth largest bank failures in U.S. history, going by history, we are due for a lot more. Finally, jobs and economy. I mentioned crashing job openings the other day, which are down one and a half million in just three months, while layoffs soared to 1.8 million on the month. Meanwhile, new jobs numbers expected today and Friday are signaling lower wages, more insecure workers, and people coming off the sidelines, not by choice, but by necessity. Combine all that with the crash in commercial real estate, a mainstay of regional banks, and the near freeze in business lending, which is the lifeblood of the small business loans that regional banks live on, we can expect more bank collapses to go with the jobs collapses, and unless we get a deficit miracle out of the debt ceiling showdown, a lot more pain. Okay, we'll be watching. So yes, as we do look at the bank crisis, I mentioned that the 25 BPS will constrict these banks even more and cause ultimate wreckage within the banking system. As we do look at this, well, it puts a lot of pressure on the system. As we look at how much, you know, depositors there are, you know, over 19 trillion, the FDIC cannot cover all of it. Um, and how will we bail out these banks? Because we are at a point in time where the debt ceiling needs to be raised, which we will probably get a raise on the debt ceiling. Um, but is it going to be enough? Um, without them really pickpocketing the retail sector through these bail-ins? Definitely concerning. I would be watching this very closely. Now also, I do think everyone should be keeping a close eye out on major banks and regional banks. These are the two major things that I have been eyeing and I've been telling you guys to watch ever since we've seen our first major collapse. Um, as we do look at major banks, we could actually see currently that there is a lot of banks that are down double digit plus figures um, in a significant way. Also within this, we do see over here from regional banks that regional banks are also down majorly. Um, in fact, you could see some of the ones that have uh, collapsed drastically. PacWest is one that I warned you guys about um, pretty early on down about roughly 72% year to date, um, which is very interesting. And you can see even the weekly down about 40, almost 6%. And some of these other ones are down drastically as well. It is only a matter of time until we start to see a lot more of these regional banks go under. And I do think that right now, more than ever, is the time to make sure that you are getting your money out of these banks. I've also been hearing a lot of people ask me, what do I believe they should invest into? And ultimately, I think that that's all up to you. But me personally, I've been aping into crypto. I've been buying into physical gold and silver. 
And of course, I have been investing into other tangible items outside of crypto and also even commodities. So with that being said, I hope that clarifies a lot of that. And I do hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me over on Twitter as well as join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.